Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and this is part two of the procedural node series. And in the last video, I said I'd be talking about values and like RGB, and these are all just different kinds of nodes we'd be talking about. And it turns out that that probably doesn't make too much sense because that is actually making and modifying a material where we probably don't already know what uh, materials are. At least I'm assuming you don't because I'm going to assume that you know nothing to begin with. And I actually already just recorded this tutorial. It was very, very good, but I forgot to show my mouse cursor because OBS does not show it by default for me. So I'm a bit mad, but that is fine. So hopefully let me make sure. Can I see the cursor? Yes. Okay. So this time we are in business and I don't have Blender open because, you know, whatever. So we are going to be using version 2.81 again, probably at some point in the series, it's going to transition to 2.82, which has some differences in some of the math nodes and all that, which isn't important right now, but I'm just letting you know. So 2.81, let's make that full screen. And can I still see my mouse? Oh, it was such a good tutorial, but this time I'll probably be able to say everything more clearly. So uh, assuming you already saw the first tutorial because it's a series and it would make sense that you did, you probably already have everything set up, but I just want to make sure you have two things. Uh, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure that you have Node Wrangler installed. Again, we already talked about this. If you, have Node Wrang if you have Node Wrangler, you're good in my book. And then the only other thing we talked about is how to get the Shader Editor window, which is where we're going to be doing all our work. And you can either do that, again, by opening up a window, going to Shader Editor, or what I like to do is just hitting this button, Shading Workspace, which gives us everything we need. And that pretty much covers the first tutorial, so why even watch it now? Okay, so again, like I said, we're not going to be really tackling material creation because we need to talk about the material system, which is this whole system in Blender that kind of tells you what objects are, do objects have materials, what are materials made out of, and it's just all these layers that go down and down and down. So let's try to keep it simple to begin with. So we have this default scene, which has a default cube, and that cube has a material. You can see we already have nodes down here. Okay, well, how do we know this has a material? Well, when we select our cube, you're gonna see it says material over here, and in our dropdown, we already have a single material. We can take this and give it a name. It can be any name. It can be, it can be dumb name, which isn't that creative. I'm gonna go with, um, I'm gonna go with uh, first ever mat, as in first ever material, and this still represents the same material. No matter what name we give it, it's still that material. So the way you want to think about this is we have an object being the cube and that cube has a material and it's called this and that material is effectively this node graph, which means as you might expect, if we change the instructions, the node network that makes up the material, it's going to change the material and therefore look different on our cube. It's pretty simple. So again, we don't know what any of this really is, but you do see something called base color, which has a white color and you might expect that we can change this. And you see, we turned it red and the whole ripple effect takes place. The node network has changed, which fundamentally changes the material itself, which changes this cube. We can duplicate this. So now we have two cubes and we can change both of them. Well, why is it changing both of them? Is it because it's a duplicate? Well, what it is, it's, is it, nah, it's because both of these objects, both these cubes, which are separate objects, you can see they have uh, two different objects, cube 001 and cube in the outliner. They're two different objects. They both have the same material, which means if we change the node network, it affects both of them. But can we have two objects have different materials? We can. All we need to do is add more materials so that they can have different ones. Because right now, if you have two objects, one material, you kind of have no other option. So how do we make a new material? In our dropdown, we only have one option. To do this, there are a bunch of ways, but the easiest way to do this is you hit this button right here, which is new material. So now we have first ever mat 001 and first ever mat. I'm gonna give this another name like, why do I need to record this again? And you can see that now we have two different materials in our dropdown and they kind of look the same, actually exactly the same, like these node networks don't change. And the reason for that is it's not a glitch, Blender is working fine. It's because we duplicated the material. When you create a new material, it will just pull from whatever material already exists, and therefore they already have the same node networks. But if we take this one, this uh, why do I need to record this material and change the color, you can see now this cube is blue. But why did this one not change? Well, this cube, when it's selected, shows that we have why do I need to record this material, and then this cube has a first ever matte material. So they're different materials. So if we want to edit this one, we go to this one, 
uh, change it to blue, this one, change it to yellow, etc. And of course, at any time we can switch. So with this one, we can switch back to this. So whatever you select from the dropdown will be the active material. And it actually gets a bit more complicated than that because we've talked about different objects having different materials. Uh, but can one object have multiple materials? Can it be both yellow and blue at the same time? And that's where it gets a bit confusing. And it actually has to do with something called material slots, which is just another layer of abstraction, because uh, Blender loves that. And you can already see that in our shader editor, we have something called slots. So you might expect that we can do something with this by you know creating, subtracting slots, whatever. So let's talk about that. So let me just delete this. So right now we have a single object with two different choices of materials. One is blue, uh, one's yellow, etc. But how do we actually have two different materials at the same time? Well, I was kind of lying to you when I said that it's as simple as object has a material and that material is the node network because it's not that object has material. Object has a material slot. It's a container. That container has a material and you can have multiple slots and those all go to the object. So it's kind of like you have a list of node networks that are sent to the object. Well, how do you see these? Well, uh, luckily for us in the shader editor, we don't only have, or sorry, the shading workspace. We don't only have the shader editor and the 3D viewport, we have this properties window, which again is in layout. So if you pull up this uh, window, you still have this property. So you're all good there. But this properties window actually has a materials tab, which has a lot of the same options. So for example, you see this is blue, this is blue, they're all linked together, but we can take this and change it to red and you can see everything synced uh, there and the names are synced, etc. But what you're gonna see is a material slot. So this is a slot and inside the slot, we have first ever material and we can pick different materials to be inside the slot and we can add different slots. So now we have two slots and let's say for the second slot, we want the other material. Now at this point, you might think, oh, this kind of looks like a layer system. So we have two different layers, each with a different material. Why don't we bring this yellow one to the foreground? And then you do that and you wonder why the cube is still red, even though it's in the background. And that's because slots are kind of confusing. It's not what you'd expect. It's not like a layer system where you can make something in the foreground and make it transparent so that both are seen at the same time. What a slot is, the way you want to think about it, is a slot is a selection. Meaning that right now this slot, which is in the second uh, down the list, uh, this slot has the full cube selected. This yellow one has none of it selected. Okay, so what do we mean? If we go into edit mode, you're going to see these three buttons appear. It's not going to be in object mode. You have to go to edit mode. And I'm just going to deselect everything. With this material selected, which again is the entire cube, we're gonna click select, which is, it says select by active material slot. We click this and now the whole cube is selected. What did it do? It basically selected every single face that had this material. So let me deselect everything. Now we're gonna do this yellow one, select. Nothing happens because none of them are selected. So what really, the way Blender really works is an object is composed of a bunch of faces and it's that each face of an object can only have one material, but since a, most objects have more than one face, you can have a bunch of different faces with a bunch of different materials. So one material per face, but if you have more than one face, you can have a variety of materials. So what do we mean? So let's just select a face like this top one. Again, all of them are red. I'm gonna select this top one. And you can see no matter what I select, so I'm gonna select this yellow, no matter what face I select, it's gonna automatically switch over. So I'm gonna select a face, then I'm gonna switch materials. And you see it didn't actually turn it yellow. What we have to do is once we have everything set up, we click assign. So now we have assigned a selection. So now we have one object with multiple materials, but again, each face has one material, as far as I know. And if we go back into edit mode, now if we select our yellow material and click select, it's only gonna highlight the top face, whereas this red one, we click select, it's gonna do uh, the other five. And we can make this a bit more complicated so we can just select these three and do an assignment of our yellow. So now half the cube is yellow, half of it's red, etc. And even from this uh, properties window, which is in the materials tab, we can also, again, add more slots, but also create new materials. So you don't necessarily have to do it here. 
We can also do it over here. So let's add a new one. We'll call it, um, we don't have blue, so let's make one blue. And you can see the slot now has the blue material, but nothing changed because it just duplicated our yellow material. So blue, yellow, they look exactly the same. So if we turn this to actually blue, now you see that everything works out. And let's say that we wanted a blue and yellow cube. What would we, what would we need to do? Well, the blue can stay blue and the red needs to become yellow. So with this material, which again has the selection, the selection of these three faces, what we need to do is just switch this over to yellow. So I think at this point we are starting, or at least hopefully understanding the hierarchy we have. We have an object is composed of faces and each face is basically a selection represented by slots, which are containers for materials and each slot's gonna have a material which is a node network, which when you say it out loud makes it sound pretty confusing. And I guess, um, <clears throat> I guess it is pretty confusing. So I think you'd be right about that. And really the rest of this series is the art of taking a material and making it into what we want. So now that we know how the material system works, it's all about actually messing around with these nodes. So, you know, something more complicated than just uh, taking the color and like switching it up. Um, I think we can do better than that. Uh, this camera switching setup is uh, quite something. Um, the only other thing I want to talk about, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. By the way, you can also do all this slot stuff we were talking about. You can do it from here. As you can see, we have uh, different slots and you can see it switches. Um, if we go to slot one, you see slot one is blue. So it toggles over to our blue material. And then, you know, same thing for this. So if we change this one to red, we're now in slot two and it's gonna be red and it, everything's linked is what I'm trying to say. The only other thing I wanna go over is material deletion, which is actually also a bit confusing. So you might expect the way you delete a material, it's right next to create material. You go to this X to unlink data block, which is just digging into Blender's data block system, which is great, but very confusing. Uh, if you click this X, you're gonna see that it removes the material, but it's still in this list. So first ever mat, delete, it's still there. What's up with that? And it has the zero next to it. Basically what it means is when you click the X, it unlinks the data block. And what should happen is when you close your Blender project, assuming it's saved, you close it, and then you open it again, only then will it actually be deleted. And the zero basically means that nothing is using that material and you chose to delete it. And therefore it's gonna be gone when you restart your Blender project. You close it, you open it. And you know, that can be a bit off-putting because you can't delete something. Even if we, you know, do it on all three, we're basically jumping around over which one has the zero. How do we actually delete something without restarting Blender? The way we do it is again, it's all this stuff with data blocks. So what we have to do is in this outliner window, you can hit this button, which right now is on view layer, I think. And what we can do is instead of that, we can view the Blender file, which is just a list of assets that make up your Blender projects. And now we're really getting, to, getting into this hierarchy stuff. Uh, what you can do is yeah, in these assets, you're gonna see, sorry about the face hopping around, uh, it's automated. Um, what you can do is go to materials and you see we have three materials, which makes sense. We open it up and we have our three materials. If you right click one, we can do all this stuff with unlinking whatever, but you can just flat out delete it. And you can see it's gone from here and now our drop down only has two. So let's just keep going with our deletion. So just right click, delete, and now we have nothing in our dropdown. <clears throat> Sorry about the voice. So yeah, that, that's how you actually delete something without restarting the project. And then to create new stuff, um, you can see it kind of has some kind of white default material. It must, uh, because clearly I have no material selected, so it's defaulting to something. We can create a new material, which will give us the simple node network to begin with. And then we just modify it in the same way as before. So that is pretty much the essence of everything you need to know. You can see that it only uh, showed up on these three faces because even though we deleted the material, the slots, uh, the material slots still exist. So if we want to have everything be red, we can just delete the first slot, which is going to make everything be uh, red because when you have only one slot, it's going to default to every face having that material. So there you go. I feel like you now know the hierarchy and I, I, under, I understand that it's a bit confusing, but you have to understand the material system before you talk about materials. So 
In the next tutorial, I think now we are ready to talk about actual nodes and not just, you know, how do you handle materials? How do you make a material? And we're going to talk about some very simple nodes and I can, I can actually give you a, a, a taste. Um, we're going to talk about nodes that aren't as crazy as, a, as this one over here. It has too much stuff going on. We're going to be talking about some simple nodes like the value node and color, and we're going to be talking about the bare basics and then building up. So hopefully you understand everything we talked about so far. So really the rest of this procedural node series is about making node graphs, node trees, whatever you want to call this, which again is the material. The material is this node graph. The material is put in a slot, which represents a selection on your objects and all that is sent to the object. So. Hopefully all that is now understandable and hopefully I recorded it correctly this time. So yeah, it's, it's rough. If you want to support this tutorial series and more so if you want to support me, the only way to do that is via Patreon. Your likes, your subscriptions, your dislikes, doesn't matter. I need a pat patron. So if, if you want to donate, that is the place to do it if you want to help me out. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully part three will be out tomorrow. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to record another, especially after this. Uh, this uh, I, I can't think of the word now that I'm at the end of the video. This um, scarring event. And that's dumb. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.